Let's return one more time to our study of the effectiveness of the various orders of running the exterminators while processing astro images using PixInsight. We're going to use a very different kind of object to study this time, a galaxy, in particular the Whirlpool Galaxy, which I imaged just a couple weeks ago during a clear night. Both the images that you now see in the PixInsight desktop are the same image, I've just cloned them. I have done no processing whatsoever yet to these images. On the image on the right, we're going to use a standard processing strategy, and on the image on the left, we're going to use the alternative protocol I proposed two videos back and also went over in the last video. All right, we'll start with standard processing and run all the way through the process. I'm beginning with a spectrophotometric color calibration. I have the SCNR ready to run in case the SPCC doesn't give satisfactory results on its own. While SPCC is running, I'll add that a galaxy is a very good alternative to study because it's very distant, it works a lot like a star in terms of development, and it's also a broadband emitter. We are working with all the ranges of light. And I'm going to tell you in advance, when I began running this, I was thinking, surely the standard method is going to turn up superior with this type of object. I mean, there has to be some kind of object that turns up superior running standard processes in development. The very processes that are recommended by both PixInsight people and the creator of the exterminators. So let's see what comes out of this. SPCC has been run and I found its results to be satisfactory. I did not run SCNR, which actually is even closer to the recommended development protocol by PixInsight staff. Now, also following standard development procedures, I'm going to run the Blur Exterminator first. I'm not actually going to remove the stars from this image at all. I have found, after developing many galaxies, that galaxies are so distant that they really, they're roughly in line with the luminance of the stars around them, and they develop well with the stars around them, so I, I don't really ever run Star Exterminator on distant galaxies. Galaxies like the Andromeda and the Triangulum, yes, but not on distant galaxies, and the Whirlpool is some 32 million light years away. It's pretty distant. You'll probably also notice I've sped this footage along so that we aren't wasting the next few minutes watching Blur Exterminator run through its processes as it works on this image. All right, Blur Exterminator has done its thing, and we're going to continue now by adjusting the histogram. And after that, I'm going to adjust the curves. And this is truly in keeping with the officially recommended, call it the doctrine of development. Russ Croman stated that Noise Exterminator was trained on nonlinear data, and so the general recommendation is to use Noise Exterminator at the end of histogram and curve stretches, perhaps at the end of all the editing. So, even though it goes against my experience and my grain, I'm going to hold off running the Noise Exterminator, and let's do some histograms. I'm applying the histogram transformation theory that I covered several videos back in my video on histogram mastery using the histogram transformation tool. It only takes a few seconds to get the histogram perfect for developing. And with that done, we're going to jump over the curves tool. Curves is where the art really meets the science here. There is a science to curves, a theory that should be kept in mind, and we are going to cover that in a few days when I release my video on mastering curves. But there is a lot of room for artistic interpretation in curves. Fundamentally, what I'm going to do is drag down the lower regions to pull back the dark, and then, as galaxies are broadband emitters, I'm going to pull up the rest of the curve, but being careful not to allow the far right upper end of the curve to become too steep or go too high so as not to blow out the brights. One special consideration with this image is there is all the stellar haze from the stars of NGC 5195, its companion galaxy with which it is gravitationally interacting. And the tidal forces are slowly sucking that other galaxy into it, but also dispersing billions of its stars into a haze around the whirlpool. We can't resolve the individual stars, but we can take steps to preserve that haze, so I'm trying to preserve as much of it as possible, and it's really quite a fascinating but faint structure. One thing to note is that I ran the Blur Exterminator with AI version 4, the latest AI that was just released for Blur Exterminator. And while I was talking, I also started up the Noise Exterminator. It's being run with AI version 2 at default settings. It doesn't take all that long to run, even with a drizzle time 2 image like this one. And when it's done, 
I'm going to go ahead and run a dynamic crop on this image for a couple of reasons. You can probably notice those dust spots top and bottom. I had stacked these images before I realized there was some new dust on the lenses to deal with. And while I have already shot new flats to deal with it, I haven't yet had a chance to restack this data through the new flats to get rid of those dust spots. So I'm going to crop them out of there, but I also want to zoom in on the galaxy. None of the dust spots affect our view of the galaxy or any of the other structures of interest here, so we can still use this image just fine. And I want to crop the galaxy so we can see what it looks like zoomed in and really get the, the best sense of what this order of developments is doing for us when using the exterminators in conjunction with standard protocols of development. There's a small galaxy to the left and a bright star to the right of the whirlpool. And I'm just going to rotate the crop so I can capture them all, get the dust spots out of the image and keep everything pretty well composed. Then we'll study it a bit later. And with cropping done, let's go ahead and move to what I've been referring to as the alternative protocol for development. The one that I recently found out through just a simple process of trial and error experimentation. The alternative protocol normally works like this. Color correction, run star exterminator, adjust histograms, then curves, then run noise exterminator, then run blur exterminator. Virtually the opposite of the standard recommendations. So I'm starting off exactly the same as I did with the previous image by running SPCC. And since it's the same image, I'm not going to bother with SCNR. I didn't determine it to be useful in this case. But just like the last time, I'm not going to remove the stars. What I'm going to do that's different this time is jump straight into histogram and curves transformation. I'll speed through the curves transformation process, but it is the exact same theory and methodology as used in the last image. In this way, I hope to compare apples to apples in so much as possible. When the histogram is done, I'll begin running a curves transformation, also applying the same theory that I used in the last image. My goal is going to be to darken the space, bring out the midtones and the brights, and avoid blowing out the upper luminance range. At the same time, we're going to work very hard to retain that galactic haze from the little galaxy that's being sucked into the whirlpool. To avoid this video being as long as the last one, I'm going to go ahead and skip over the rest of that process. I am now running Noise Exterminator. Contrary to convention and common sense, I'm going to run the Noise Exterminator first. The only thing I'm doing here really that does fit the standard development protocol is I'm running the noise exterminator toward the end of the development process. But don't have conniptions until you see the final result, please. As soon as the noise exterminator is done, I'm going to run the blur exterminator. By the way, I'm running the noise and blur exterminators here using the exact same settings I used with the last image. Both are at default and the blur exterminator running AI4. And finally, as soon as the Blur Exterminator is done, I'm going to run a dynamic crop and make roughly the same, as close as I can get it, to the same crop as I made in the last image. Let's go ahead and take a look at the final results. Now, I had expected with this image that the standard method of development would yield a better result, something more aesthetically pleasing. I mean, it's the standard officially recommended development method, right? But it just isn't happening here either. Let's start by taking a look at the Whirlpool's companion galaxy, NGC 5195. The image on the left using standard developments is dimmer and it's softer, it's just less resolved. Using this method doesn't even manage to retain as much of the galactic haze as is retained with the alternative protocol. And you can also see when we zoom in that the structure within NGC 5195 is more detailed in the alternative protocol. Now that's AI operating, so it may not be exactly accurate, but it's pretty darn true to accurate. It's not like we just made up something and stuck it in there. The AI is still working with what's there. Looking at the main zoomed in galaxy, we see a similar result. The detail in the standard development image on the left is somewhat washed out. It's there, but it's softer. And the colors too are softer. The shadows are not as defined. This isn't even an issue of hyper contrast. They are simply not as defined. Looking at the Whirlpool developed with the alternative protocol on the right, we can see a much sharper, crisper image of the Whirlpool galaxy. Details and stretches within the galactic arms are much better preserved. And the gaseous bodies within the galactic arms, the nebulae, are they are less shrunken, they're more visible. Some persons might say, well, that's desirable. That's the result of deconvolution. And that would make this one of those places where I would point out why sometimes I do not like to run deconvolution on stars or star-looking bodies. I want to emphasize them at times. 
This is already a distant galaxy and these nebulous structures are very small. I want them to be able to stand out, to be readily visible, not, not just to us persons who do this stuff and are pixel peepers, but if I'm making this image for the average viewer, I want those nebulous structures to be obvious to them too. It's an important part of creating the aesthetic of this image. Like every other editing technique, deconvolution is not always better. There is no one size fits all anything in the development of any image. The right path to development really depends on what you're aiming to accomplish and your own personal artistic taste in the whole process. Let's take a look at the galactic haze in the upper part of the Whirlpool's arms, that arm that is extending far out into the distance. In the image on the left, it again is much softer, much less detail is captured. The blacks are too dark, somewhat crushed, though the nebulous structures within that arm are certainly more deconvolved, though again I don't think that's desirable here. In the alternative protocol developed image on the right, the arm is brighter and the detail crisper. And if you look at the clearly red emission nebula over on the left side, now within that small red circle, you'll see that distant nebula over 30 million light years away is sharper. It's just clearly sharper in the alternative protocol image on the right. But not only is it sharper, but the red is richer and more vibrant. Now that's a common phenomenon I see when developing images with the standard protocol. Uh, some colors become washed out. Well, the alternative protocol, strangely, tends to preserve color better. Zooming out a little bit, we see that the overall image of the galaxy is superior on the right side if we are considering aesthetics, sharpness, brightness of the nebulous detail, and in particular, the appearance of the gaseous haze from NGC 5195 is clearly brighter, clearer, sharper, and more defined in the alternative protocol image on the right. Now let's take a look at the top left at another interesting detail. There is a far distant galaxy visible up there. Let's pull it in in both images. Do you see it up on the top left? I'll circle it. That galaxy is very far away. It's, it's pretty much at or beyond the limits of my little 81 millimeter telescope that I'm using here to resolve any meaningful detail. But whether the detail is actually there or implied, in the alternative protocol, there is some detail visible in that galaxy. If we're shooting for aesthetic purposes, it certainly looks better. And the appearance is based on the actual data. Insofar as I can tell, the AI of Blur Exterminator is building on what's actually there. But as I noted in the previous video, when using Blur Exterminator in this way, it is best not to think of it as true deconvolution, but rather a very advanced sharpening tool that applies AI to the purpose, giving some outstanding results. Now I then took both these images and just increased the general saturation a bit to try to bring out some color. As has happened in every circumstance where I've experimented with this, the alternative protocol gave better color. But there is something else that I want to cover here, something I feel is also really important, as important as that little galaxy we just looked at up in the left. If we zoom way in and look down to the right, we'll see there is a tiny galaxy, barely visible overall in the image, called IC4277, roughly a half billion light years away. It's, it's quite incredible it's in there at all. I'll circle it in both instances to help you identify it. As with pretty much everything else in this alternative protocol, the galaxy is sharper, crisper, and brighter. It just plain honestly shows up better. And if you look at the stars scattered through those images, bear in mind those stars are within our own galaxy. They just happen to be in the way of shooting this image of the whirlpool. You can see that they're about equally deconvolved. They're well treated. In some ways, I'd say they're better. So, once again, you'll have to draw your own conclusions, but so far, I honestly am finding the alternative protocol to be better in almost every way when developing for aesthetics. And to review quickly, this alternative protocol is do your color correction, whether you use SPCC or SCNR or some combination or something else. If you're going to remove stars, run Star Exterminator. If not, then skip that step, then transform your histograms, then transform your curves, then run Noise Exterminator first, and then the Blur Exterminator. And yeah, I know that's going to raise the hackles in some persons listening to this, but again, I'm just showing you the outcomes. This is what I get when I run these tests every single time. So I hope that helps. Whatever you do, I hope you enjoy working with astrophotography and developing your images. There are all kinds of ways to go about these processes, many paths on this journey. And join me on the first when we take a deep dive into curves theory. 
your curse tool is the single most powerful tool at your disposal. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to that video. Till then, get out there and shoot the sky.